Hey there, pizza dogs. Welcome to our first episode of Interchange Insiders, where we dive deep into the world of North American interchanges and city skylines too. If you're new here, I'm Z Reezy, your guide on this virtual engineering journey. So why are we talking about interchanges? Well, a good interchange can be the heart of a thriving city, efficiently pumping traffic through its arterial roads. And that's no exception in CS2. Get it wrong and well, you'll be stuck in gridlock. In each episode of this series, we'll focus on one specific type of interchange, break down its information, and then jump into the game to build it from scratch so you can also use it in your own city. Trust me, by the end of the series, you'll be an interchange guru. Before we get into today's episode, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button. Not only will it help this channel, but it'll make sure you don't miss out on any of the upcoming episodes. And let's be honest, you don't want to miss this ride. Alright, enough of the chit chat, let's get into today's interchange. Let's get right to the heart of today's episode, the Diverging Diamond Interchange, also known as the DDI. This interchange is a modern wonder that made its debut in the United States in 2009. The DDI has been making waves for its efficient design and unique approach to traffic flow. It's especially effective where a freeway intersects with a busy arterial road. Think of it as the new kid on the block who everyone wants to know more about. Now let's talk about what sets the DDI apart. The first thing you'll notice is its unique crisscross layout that enhances safety by reducing the number of conflict points where vehicles might collide. It's like the crossing guard of interchanges, helping everyone get to where they need without any fuss. This also contributes to its growing popularity, especially in areas focused on improving road safety. But it's not just about safety and good looks, it's also about your budget. The DDI is usually more cost effective than other, more complicated interchanges giving you a bang for your buck. It won't demand too much real estate either, its compact design is perfect for cities where space is at a premium. Speed is another key aspect of the DDI. It's engineered to keep traffic moving at a moderate pace, eliminating slowdowns that can occur at more traditional junctions. The user experience is smooth as well. The DDI eliminates the need for left turns against oncoming traffic, making it easier for drivers to navigate. In terms of scalability, the DDI is like your favorite video game character. It levels up with ease. As your city grows, this interchange can adapt without much hassle. And let's not forget about our two-wheeling and two-legged friends. The DDI often features crosswalks and bike lanes, making it accessible for pedestrians and cyclists alike. This is a fantastic feature to those of you building cities with the focus on more green transportation. Although, as we know, that's not yet a feature in CS2. Before we get into building this beauty in game, let me share a few more technical tidbits. The DDI has a higher capacity for handling large volumes of left-turning vehicles, making it a go-to for asymmetrical traffic loads. It's also well suited for accommodating public transportation options like buses. And for those who are environmentally conscious, you'll be happy to know that the DDI often leads to reduced fuel consumptions due to its efficient design. Last but not least, in terms of construction time, the DDI usually requires less time to build compared to more complex designs, so your virtual citizens will thank you for the minimized disruptions. Alright, that wraps up our deep dive into the diverging diamond interchange, now let's jump into CS2 and bring this engineering marvel to life. Here we are on the map Barrier Island. I have both Unlock All and Unlimited Money on just for the purposes of this tutorial, but if you are not using Unlock All, just make sure you have both Road Services and Highways unlocked in your Progression tab using your Development Point. There's two ways we can make our DDI. We can do either from like example here, a highway to highway connection, or we can do a highway to arterial road connection, which is probably most commonly used in real life. In this tutorial, we're going to go over both examples. To start with the highway to highway connection, what we're going to do is kind of find an imaginary cross here between two parallel road highlights. So what we're going to first do is using our two lane road and we're going to use this for getting the zoning squares just for better measurement. We're going to find like our underpass road and we're going to find this and kind of do parallel. And just kind of go straight down as far as we want and I get the line going and we'll split that down. And then you'll see how we get our zoning styles because we're using a non highway road. And now kind of find the imaginary line where this kind of would cross across, go across. We're going to then kind of build our overpass. So I like to also go first, uh, let me say, I'm going to pick a gravel road and you'll kind of see why we're using this for better measurements. I'm going to go up to the 26.25. I find that height to be good. Still using parallel. And again, I like to use a two for my parallel mode increase. So we're going to find that and then kind of doesn't be perfect, but just kind of roughly where we think the overpass would be about here. We're going to go out one square, the second square, and then go across and then make that parallel. Make sure you also get the second square on the other side. So we have a nice little parallel road across. Now what we're going to do is kind of make some different marker points. So turning off parallel road, we're going to then now do 
a little few different squares. So 26 by 26 by 26 by 26. So like a square. I'm gonna do that two times on each side. Should have these nice kind of double squares off like this. Now from there, what we're gonna do, just to kind of get this down, is we're gonna to switch to our two lane highway. And then we're gonna go to again, have the parallel part on. Make sure you have the outside corner, corner connection here between the second square. So you'll see how there's like an inner, a middle, and then an out. We wanna to go to this out one, click once, and then going straight out, we're gonna bring this down to zero. This is kind of like our on and off to the connection. So get this to be as great as we can. You know, this 180 here and kind of bring this down. Again, clicking the, make sure it's, it's important to pick the right one here. Now, going back to our gravel road and then turning off parallel road, we're going to then now make another point going out from the middle of this to about we'll try 37 doesn't have to be perfect but we want that to match on all of them oh and it doesn't like that so let's do let's see if we can get one that matches on both sides so do 44 it looks like that might be better 44 and we'll do that on all of them and then i also like to make a little mark over on that 44 you'll see kind of why later Now from here, what we're gonna do is our make our connection back into the highway. So again, keep using the gravel road. We're gonna click in on one uh, here, and then we're gonna bring it, we're gonna go down to a zero elevation. We're gonna kind of go out a little bit, click, and then kind of bring it in and see what we like. So I think it's about like 77 seems solid. This doesn't have to be perfect. Just wanna get this, and we, we do kind of wanna try to get these to match though. So about 77, seems good. Okay, so now we have a nice little on and off ramps. Going back to our straight tool, what we're now gonna do is, actually we'll, we'll use the curve tool. From this connection here, we're going to make a connection where we go a little bit in and then kind of bring it down to here. And it might be easier to go the other direction, kind of coming up like this. Sometimes that makes it a little bit nicer. We're gonna do that on all the sides. You can also delete that connection, that little marker after you get those in, it's totally fine. I'm gonna to try to get these to be uh, symmetrical, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Now from there, what we're gonna do is go back to a straight tool and we're gonna find this inner square. We're gonna make a crisscross. We're gonna go from that right there across at a perfect 45 across. And if we can do it there, we can do the same thing on both sides. We can have a little tiny X here. And now around that X, you're gonna actually delete the sides and tops. Like, like that, so now have a little X. And then now we're also gonna delete these little middle columns. But it looks, should look something like this, start to kind of come together. We can also do is get rid of this middle section. So now we kind of see you have this kind of weird symbol. Now we're, this is where we're going to kind of clean it up a little bit. So what we're going to do is kind of get rid of both oh, right here that one of the sides of the X so it looks like that. We're going to now use our tool to kind of make this a little bit nicer across. So you can kind of see you get a little bit better connection here. A little bit nicer diamonds there. Now comes the upgrading part. So now we're going to switch back to our highway roads and then we want to make sure that this kind of follows the right. So we're going to switch to our replace tool and then what we're going to do first is we're going to go in each direction. So the first one is going to be it's going to be the opposite of what you think. So here instead of going the correct way it's going to be going and you can kind of get this to line up. Actually you know what it might be easier to start from here. So from here using the two lane we're going to go down. So what you do is you to use the upgrade tool you can kind of both click and hold and then go the direction you want. So here we're gonna go, and you can also kind of left and right and move it. We wanna to try to keep it as center as possible, go there. 
and do the same thing across. So see how you and you can kind of get this lined up. You want to make sure it stays nice and lined up. Go across. And same with the middle. Same like this. Kind of how you want to you can shift it while you're holding it. Kind of keep it straight and then get that lined up. And now we do the opposite direction. And now for our on and off ramps right here, we're going to go following the lane path. So like here, going off. And then this one, since they're going on that direction, same with here, going off. And then now for our on and off ramps, we kind of do this as we bring these connection here and then bring them back down. This also allows you to kind of make little small tweaks if you if you got any of the alignment off earlier. You know, if you don't use those guides, sometimes the alignment's not perfect. So this kind of helps get that alignment re readjusted if you need to, like there. Like if you're off, you can kind of always fix that with the upgrade tool. And then of course, what we also want to do is make sure that we upgrade back this uh, highway road back to be a, uh, or a, you know, this, this where we use the two lane road, we want to switch back to a highway. So using the three lane, go in here and make sure you swap that out. And then last but not least, what I like to do is where we have a three lane, if you imagine in real life, there would likely be like kind of like a slip lane or a collector lane there. So I like to switch to four, four way highway. And then just for a few segments before it, you, you know, again, you can kind of change the lane up here. I kind of like to do, bring it up a little bit. So you kind of now have like a dedicated uh, lane and same with the merging here, helps with the merging. Fantastic. And then the last thing we need to do is using our road tools, our road services, we need to go in here and first click the uh, the light where there's the two lights on a DDI is right here and right here where the cross happens. And we also want to just make sure we, we check our lanes here and make sure there's nothing weird going on that we don't expect. So for example, like here, we want to stop this left turn from happening. A DDI would not normally allow that. So we want to make sure that goes straight across for both. So anywhere you see that, same with this one. We shouldn't be seeing that, so that's straight. On this case here, we want that's a right turn and should not be allowed, so we need to switch to the no right. And this one, there we go, find it. Yep, perfect, no right. And let's see if that applies anywhere else. I think that might be the only places. Oh, right here it looks like too. We don't wanna yeah, stop that from happening. So you'll see that that little white marker was showing a little round there. We don't want people to be able to do that. So now we have, yeah, perfect crisscross, okay. Fantastic. And then basically from here, what you would do is you would use, you know, you're your here in this case, we're using a two lane. Could be a, you could then upgrade this to a three lane, you know, if, you're, if that's your highway connection is. You would then just take your two lane and then go over here and then, you know, you can make a nice connection with your other highway. Um, I'm doing this really quick, but normally you could, you know, use continuous and do something a little bit nicer. Make sure this connects, you know, nicely with your other highway. This is a little bad, but you know, you get the idea. And now you have a highway to highway uh, DDI, which is fantastic. Other things you could do just to kind of note is both, you know, put greenery around it. We could plant trees kind of here around the side. The other thing you could possibly do if you'd like is if you, you know, if you bring your brush straight, front straight really low and with your shift terrain tool, make that a little smaller. We could always go in here and upgrade it so that this kind of comes up at a, so instead of this all being elevated, what we could always do is bring this up. And then you can always go in there with the upgrade tool to so kind of smooth that out. You can kind of, you know, that would probably be more realistically how it done. This probably would not be all totally elevated. So that's something you can always play around with. Totally up to you. Kind of play with the terrain kind of make that a little bit more flush with the ground. Totally fine. And again, you could plant some trees, do different things like that. But all in all, this is really awesome that CS2 gives us the ability to make like a DDI like this. Now, starting with the highway to Arterio Road, we're gonna now do something similar. I'm gonna just delete everything we had and flatten this back out. And then we're gonna do something similar, right? So we're gonna start with our small roads and we're gonna go to a two lane road, parallel tool, two, just like we did before, and bring our road across and down. So now here though, just assume that this highway wasn't here and you wanna go to Arterio Road. So that's gonna be kind of our difference here. So it's going to be still similar like what we did. We're going to switch to a dirt road. We're going to go up to 26.25. And then we're going to go and build, you know, one, one little square out. We're going to build our parallel across. And then from here, we're going to make our turn off parallel and then make our little squares. So 26 by 26 squares. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when we're going to an arterial row, what we're going to do actually is make a third little square. So I'll kind of understand here in a second to be able to get a middle point. So in this one, we're going to go 26 out. And then now we're going to make our X out on the third square. Now we're going to get rid of everything outside of like the triangle is a good way to put it. So you have a little triangle at the end. And this gives us right here. Now you can see we have now an X at the middle. So this will be our arterial, our arterial road. That's a four lane divided. And this will just kind of go straight out. You know, whatever angle we would be going at and back down to flat. Now, basically doing like what we did before. Now that we kind of have that, we're going to now pick our middle one. Like I said before, go out about like last time we were up was to do like 44. Then make our little markers. And then from here, what we'll do is we'll make our connections to the highway. But last time we liked 77 was kind of a good place. And then from there, we'll use our curve tool to bring in these side roads. And we'll get rid of all of our little markers. And then we need to make our X here in the middle square or the inner circle square. And here's now we get rid of all of our guides. Like so. And then again, like before, gonna have this kind of ugly or like harsh turn. So we wanna get rid of this and then switch through and then do kind of a nicer uh, connection here between those. diverging diamond and now we do the upgrades again so like kind of like before switch to our uh, this doesn't have to be a highway since we're doing a um, you know a street road here so we can do switch to our just a two lane one way what we're doing before we go right angle The ones off the highway, you might want to do a highway though, like that might, probably makes more sense. So we can switch the highway for those ones. Oh, we got the wrong direction here. Just fix that, hold and click and drag. So then again, we have our DDI set up. So now because we used uh, a regular street, we need, definitely need to make sure we turn off all these crosswalks. So we'll just go in here, turn off all the crosswalks. And you could have like a pedestrian bridge or something else specific for that. Then we also want to make check our turns. So in this case here, we don't want them to be able to U-turn. So we should turn off the right turn. Same with this. We don't want um, this to have a left turn here. No left turn here. Basically, you should see no kind of roundabout looking circles. Up here, and up the right. And then we want to make sure we turn our lights here in the middle. We'll just do a quick check, just make sure we got all the different paths. What I like to kind of do is maybe pick the angle like this and kind of imagine going down the different roads. So if I wanted to go, you know, east, if this is eastbound over here, we could, you know, go east. Then if we're going uh, west, it'd be coming across, then going down. Oh, oh, we forgot to upgrade R. 
highway down here. I was wondering why that was going a left turn. Make sure we go with our three lane and then bring this highway down. And then, as I mentioned before, you can always add this like extra slip lane, kind of the merging lane. So go to four right before or after. And then with that, we have our DDI to an arterial road. So again, as I mentioned before, we can always do different things with like the terrain or, you know, add some trees, do a little nice touch ups. Um, that's all stuff that you feel free to do and kind of make that look a little nicer if you want to. One thing we've also forgot to do is we we can get rid of the light right before. So we make sure you get rid of the light right there at the end so that that's free flowing and the only two lights are there in the middle. The DDI to Arterial Road, you can kind of see it flows really well. Again, I kind of went through this pretty fast. You get the general idea. You can always kind of clean up some of these angles and kind of, you know, maybe make them a little bit smoother, a little bit further. You can make this more compact or, or give it more room if you want more space to kind of have a little more gradual. Uh, turns and curves totally up to you you have lots of options with something like this and with the new tools the road tools that we have in cs2 we also just get lots of flexibility it's awesome that we can do something like this in vanilla cs1 would never allow something like that to happen which is really cool that originally you needed mods and now we can just kind of knock this out without any mods very very awesome stuff and there you have it we've successfully built two versions of the diverging diamond interchange an interchange that's as efficient as it is intriguing this versatile junction isn't just a showpiece, it offers practical benefits ranging from safety to scalability. Your virtual citizens will experience smoother commutes and you can sit back and marvel how effortlessly this design handles traffic complexities. If you found this guide helpful and you can't wait to see the other interchanges we'll be tackling in this series, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned and let's keep building better cities together. Thanks so much for stopping by and we'll see you in the next episode.